The comedian and sometime political commentator Sarah Silverman thinks it is uh, bigoted, her word is transphobic, to exclude biological males from women's sports. Listen. I saw Caitlyn Jenner saying trans girls uh, should not play girls' sports. Caitlyn, you're a woman, right? A trans girl is a girl. She should have the same rights as cis girls. If you think a trans girl, what, you think a trans girl is too strong? I. <laughs> what about tall girls as opposed to short girls? What about uh, boys in high school who are teeny tiny and their teammates uh, have already hit puberty and are shaving? Why don't you just have co-ed sports divided by weight or height, I, you know? This is so dumb. They are legislating this shit without one single example of how this plays out. This is not worrying about girls' sports. Uh, believe me, not. I think uh, there are better ways to worry about girls' sports. This is not worrying about, this is not what that is. This is not worrying, this is not concern for girls' sports. It's transphobia, full stop. It's just such a bummer when a, you know, such a prominent trans woman is such a twat. You know, it's like being Jewish right now and having the most recognizable Jewish names be Weinstein and Epstein. You know, it's like super not awesome, but. Now, I'm trying to follow her argument because it seems to me that her argument carried to its conclusion means that there shouldn't be women's sports. Why? Because there are no meaningful intrinsic differences, according to her, between the two sexes. You have slow men and fast women. Uh, you have short men and tall women. And so why draw a line like this? Now, interestingly, she doesn't go there. She doesn't say, let's abolish women's sports. Uh, she simply says, let's protect women's sports but let's make this uh, allowance for biological men to compete. What's the big deal? She really can't see uh, a big deal at all. Now, to understand what the big deal is, it helps to try to think about why we separate the genders, why we separate the sexes in sports at all. The reason is that there are important physical, biological, and one might say natural differences between the sexes. And for this reason, you can make strong generalizations about the two groups. Let's just say men are stronger than women. Uh, men are taller than women. These are accurate generalizations. Now, like all generalizations, you will find that they are true on the average. Uh, of course, one can find you know, exceptions. It's no refutation to the claim that men are taller than women to say, well, you know, here's Fred and he's you know, 4'9", and here's Susie and she's 6'1". Uh, that does not invalidate the generalization. So, if you got rid of women's sports, uh, if you didn't have a competition where, in effect, women play against women on a kind of level, biological level playing field, and men play against men, if you didn't do that, let's say if you opened Wimbledon up to a single competition, award a single prize to the best tennis player, I think you'd find not only that women are not in the final or the quarterfinal, but women don't qualify at all and they wouldn't qualify by and large in any sport. It might be a rare case where in one sport out of a full team you have one woman. That might happen, but that's probably going to be the extent of it. So in effect, as a practical matter, women's sports would come to an end. And so the people who criticize this um, uh, idea of including men who identify as women uh, are basically making the point that the only way to protect women's sports is to keep it to women. Keep it to women playing against women. And by women here, we mean biological women, not just men who think they are women or who have always thought they are women or who like to put on women's shoes when they were six years old. If you want to get rid of women's sports, do it. But if you want to keep women's sports, then you need to have a biological, a physical, a natural level playing field.